Hey guys, it's Chris. I will show you on this video how to build your own electronics industrial rail mounted module. We will see both the housing and the circuit board. So let's get started. We will build a 4 MOSFET channel circuit module that could be used to drive up to 28 amps at a maximum of 100 volt DC. This is a high voltage that you will be dealing with, so stay carefully concentrated about the protection precautions. All files and documents are available for download through the links in the description down below. Starting with the main part of our module, the IRF540 MOSFET is commonly used for fast switching devices. It is like dealing with a large capacity transistor. A minimum current available on its gate will close the drain source junction. For the circuit setup, we will use the most recommended components configuration of 1K 10K ohms resistors. Since the MOSFET gate acts as a capacitor and charging currents can exceed 200 mA, then a 1K ohm series resistor keeps this around the 20 mA. A 10K pull-down resistor ensures shut-off if gate floats. Signals will come from the microcontroller through the 1K ohm resistor. I will place a opto-isolation stage to protect the microcontroller from getting in contact with the MOSFET stage, which is in a high power level. And this will ensure an optical isolation to protect my device. Since the optocoupler needs a separate power supply, then I use this DC-DC converter to create a separated ground between the microcontroller and the optocouplers. And this will ensure a galvanic isolation, which provides a second protection level. I highly recommend this setup whenever you try to involve the outputs of your microcontroller or dev board like Arduino with industrial equipment. I move it to Altium Designer, there what I made the schematic of my module. I duplicated the MOSFET circuit configuration to get 4 similar channels. You can get all your schematic components from Octopart and bring them to your schematic the easy way. Basically all the needed components are available out there and you need just to search for them using the manufacturer part number. I placed 4 terminal blocks on my circuit. Two of them for power supply, one for the inputs, and another one for the outputs. I then transformed this schematic into a PCB design and arranged all components on the appropriate shape to suit the rail mounting. Remember that the input terminals should be at the top of the board and the outputs at its bottom. Make sure that you are routing the MOSFET drain source traces in a large track width, in my case it's 1.5 millimeters depending on the current value that you will drive through the FETs. For high current, I recommend the use of up to 3 mm track width and keep the traces copper exposed so you can add more solder coil on it. I also added some holes to screw the module to the enclosure. Unfortunately, I didn't find the 3D model for these specific terminals, so I just designed them by myself following the parts datasheet then I brought them to my PCB design. And here is how it looks in 3D view. I then generated the Gerber files related to my design and moved it to JLC PCB to place my order. I selected the white solder mask color and golden nickel for surface finish. Well, there are no specific reasons for my selection, so you can go with the most appropriate settings for you. I also ordered stencil for my PCB design. Not very useful in our case, but it's always good to show you some assembly techniques. Six days later, I got my order delivered very well, and here are the PCBs and the stencil chip it together with the best quality that I can get for that price. Everything looks ready, now it's time to assemble. The use of stencil will certainly help you to achieve the solder paste deposit the easier way. I then placed all the parts on their placements on the board 
and took it to my hot plate. After assembly, I cleaned the board with some flux removal solvent. Then I soldered my special terminal blocks to the board sides. Now my module looks ready. Moving to the housing, I designed this one following the module dimensions and I consider it to add these holes where I will place M3 threaded inserts to help me screw the module to the housing. I 3D printed the housing and now we complete the module assembly. I made this rail holder through my 3D printer to show you the ease of mounting this module on the rail. Now we test our device functioning. So first we need two separate power sources. The first one is for the optocouplers and the second one is for the MOSFET outputs. I use it 5V DC for power input and 24V DC for outputs. Then I use it a digital pin from my Arduino to control the first MOSFET channel output where I place it a 24V DC indicator. I also use it a second digital pin from Arduino to control the second MOSFET channel. This is a basic blinking sketch that we are using here just for demonstration. The two channels will blink in two different frequencies controlled by Arduino. As you can see guys, the indicators blink following the Arduino signals means we successfully made our module. I'm pretty sure that there are some other upgrades that we can do to this module so just let me know your suggestions in the comments section. That's it for today guys. One last thing, make sure that you are doing electronics every day. It was Chris, see you next time.